All right, greetings and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can cut holes in porcelain tile. Check this out. I'm doing a shower renovation project and I've got a nice perfectly cut hole here for my shower valve. Look at that. So how do you do it? And also how do you make that really small hole up there for your shower arm, right? Not an easy thing. So we're going to get started here and I'll show you some tricks and what tools you'll need and how you can get to something like this at the end of the day, right? Or at least that's the project that I'm working on. Now, it is possible to take uh, a wet tile saw just like this and do holes that way. In previous bathroom jobs, I've used just this as my main tool, but it is a little more cumbersome. It is not super easy, so instead I'm going to be using a handheld grinder, which is what you just saw. Uh, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But obviously the first step is to get your measurements correct. Measure three times and cut once, right? Transfer that to a piece of paper or whatever object you might want to bring down to your workstation, right? And you're gonna transfer that over really well to your tile. So can I emphasize enough, make sure those measurements are accurate. Go back to your work site, measure again, transfer it over, make sure everything lines up perfectly. Now to do that, uh, I mean, your whole, you know, location is going to be a little different, but I've got my T-square there, obviously a tape measure and a pencil. Don't use a permanent marker or anything on your tile. It's going to be a lot harder to clean. A pencil washes off with water really nicely. Um, and for tracing a shower valve hole, you might want to use the little black plastic insert that accompanied maybe you bought a new shower valve or anything with a similar diameter. In this case, it's a five inch hole and I'm tracing around with a, it's about four and a half or maybe four inches. So I had to add out a little bit, but you can basically take something that's pretty close and then, you know, sketch about a, the difference, you know, kind of like what I'm doing here. So there's actually two lines and I'll erase that first line or I know which line to cut around. So uh, next you're gonna want to clamp down your tile. Not essential you've got a, if you've got a really big heavy tile like this, um, but I recommend it. Here is the handheld grinder uh, that I referred to earlier and this has a diamond kind of tipped or diamond edged wheel or blade on it. And I will pop links down below if you're interested in the tool that I'm using. I actually did a separate video reviewing this tool. It is awesome. Anyway, check out what I'm going to be doing here, the technique. So finish side up. If I've got a medium sized hole like this, so about four or five inches, it's going to be really comfortable. You're going to want to do a few test cuts if you've never done this before to kind of get the hang of it. So take some scrap tile and do some sample markings, some sample circles. And because it's a little awkward, you want to find the right angle when it comes to the real thing. Um, and you're just going to kind of work your blade like this. I took the cover off my blade uh, because I wanted to have better visuals of it. And also I'm not, I'm not pushing down hardly at all. I'm letting the saw do most of the work and it, it just kind of takes over and kind of, now you just want to make sure you you know, control it so it doesn't run away on you or start moving in the direction that you don't want it to go. But in terms of depth, it, it just kind of sits very lightly on top of the tile. And you're going to make, you know, a few passes like this just to get your, your, your line kind of chiseled out. And then once that's done, you can start getting a little more aggressive with it, turning the angle a little bit more. Now, obviously that inner part of the circle is junk. We're going to get rid of that. We can damage it. We can cut that up if we need to. Um, and the outside though, we, we can't go beyond a certain diameter. Otherwise your escutcheon plate for your shower valve won't cover it, right? You don't want your, any, any crack protruding from that. And because I'm a pretty obsessive person, I'm going to make sure this hole is exactly perfect although it doesn't technically have to be, as you'll see in the next cut that we're going to do with the shower arm. So now that I have things kind of chiseled out, my main circle line, my perimeter 
I'll do a couple of cross cuts like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because you can only get so depth, so deep uh, with the perimeter cut that I just did um, before something has to give. So I'm just going to kind of knock out some of this middle stuff a little bit to give me some better leverage and better angling. You can see right there, I just cut through that bottom part completely and got rid of that quarter, that quadrant. And I'm getting pretty deep on those middle cuts. There's another pie shaped cut that I'm making. Sorry that uh, clamp blocked that view there, but there's another cut right down the middle. See, with that middle piece still there, it's kind of hard to... There we go. So now I can start angling it a little bit so it comes across that middle. Again, I don't care what that middle looks like. And with those pieces, without those pie pieces, those pieces aren't going to chip away. Can you see that? So I, I think the pie pieces are important. And then you can come in and get kind of close to your edge and cut that away just like that. Now as far as cleaning that up, if you do need it to be a perfect cut, I will show you what to do next, but you can certainly kind of play around with getting some of that, whatever you can kind of access without touching that finished edge. You should be able to get quite a bit. Don't put a lot of pressure on that blade. It's not designed to have pressure put on it. You can also flip your tile over and clean it up a little bit that way. I don't recommend this though because you can't see the finished edge exactly, but you can do this just for really small, small, small kind of detail some of the detail finishing. This blade will definitely run away. It's got a lot of power, this tool does. So be really careful and use caution. You can see how close my finger is to the blade and always use protective eyewear. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. Let's just turn it over and get it kind of cleaned up. You can see it's a pretty good cut, but still not perfect yet. So I'll show you a little trick here to make it I think even better. So bear with me, we're not there yet. All right, so here is what we're gonna do. If you have a hole that's similarly sized like this one, so five inches or so, uh, the blade on my grinder is not too far from that. It's certainly smaller, maybe four, Four, four and a half, I can't remember what size blade this is or wheel this is, but look at that. Just put it right in there. And that way you don't run any risk of damaging the finished surface of your tile. And you can just kind of poke around and get that all chiseled out really nicely. Look at that. So I wouldn't say 100% perfect, but 95%. It probably just has to be 80%, honestly, because again, that escutcheon plate that you, you know, your your shower handle plate is going to go right over that. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like underneath. And we'll put up that tile, and it's going to be a perfect fit. Now this particular job needed another cut, kind of a semicircle cut to finish off the top part of that circle for the shower valve. So I just used a similar similar method that you just saw. Draw out your outline and then use your grinder to make that nice and near perfect. All right, so the next cut we're gonna be doing together is a much more difficult cut, I think, and that's the hole for your shower arm. You can see that's a much smaller diameter. And here's the deal, you wanna transfer the measurements over to your tile and then take out your escutcheon cover for your shower arm and make sure you have that line accurately marked on your table 
on your tile as well. So you have your ideal cut line and also your do not go outside of cut line. Now what you're seeing here, um, I'm gonna be using a Dremel tool with a diamond wheel on it. Again, I'll pop links down below for all the tools that you see in this, in this video that are relevant to getting this job done. But it's got a diamond cut, a di little diamond wheel on there. And you're not gonna cut all the way through with this. It doesn't, in my opinion, have the durability, strength, and power to do that. But we're gonna get pretty darn close. And we're gonna use our grinder there to help us. So let me attach the diamond tipped cutoff wheel or diamond blade, whatever you wanna call it. And you can see I've got my outline. Now you don't actually have to make a circle. You could do a square. That's why I did both there for you. Because again, you're gonna cover all this up with your escutcheon plate for your shower arm and whatnot. So it doesn't have to be a perfect square. And my standard actually is gonna be reduced significantly on this, on this cut because it's a, like I said, it's a pretty tough cut. So um, it's not going to be a pretty a pretty picture, and I'm not willing to pay a lot of money for a porcelain drill bit that can put a hole, you know, this uh, one and a half, two inches in diameter. So what I'm doing here is lightly, very carefully, with my Dremel tool, just laying out a little pre-cut path. You can see it takes care of that porcelain top really well, really easily. And I like this versus the grinder blade because it's much smaller. You can make much tighter turns. You have a lot more control, although it does it can slip away from you, so be careful. Um, it's on a pretty high setting. And I'm making my perimeter outline just like I did with my grinder earlier in the video and make some pizza cut wedges as well. And those pizza cut wedges just allow you to safely kind of put your blade all the way through the tile if you need to. You'll automatically notice this is not the most powerful tool, I mean, compared to the, to the grinder. So you might go through a few wheels. I went through two or three wheels doing this and also cutting some mosaic, really, really small piece of mosaic tile like this. And I, again, I use this in combination with my grinder, and you'll see me transition to that step here in just a second. So I'm getting it kind of as deep as I can there with my pizza cuts, looking on the other side to see if that penetrates. There, it looks like we've got one cut that went all the way through. And that's what I was kind of wanting and waiting for now. You can encourage it a little bit. And you can certainly draw, you know, an outline on the, put your measurements on the backside of that too, so you know exactly where to cut. Um, if you do cut from the backside, you run the risk of not being able to see exactly where your blade's going, but you should be okay, generally speaking. Again, it's not a very powerful blade. Um, and you're just gonna slowly widen out those pizza cut trans, or those pizza cut lines that you made. See what I mean? You don't know how far over to go, so just be careful there. And then you can start doing this. You can start tilting your wheel just a little bit, getting a little more aggressive. And you can scratch up those edges, because again, on your on your, your lines, you've got your ideal cut, and then your do not exceed or do not go outside of cut, right? In other words, your escutcheon cover uh, line that you put on there. So you know exactly where you can kind of mess up a little bit, but it wouldn't matter because you'll cover it up. Okay, so you can see I, I'm rounding the corner, my first little quadrant there, and look at that, it just pops right out. Not bad, right? And you can do that for all four corners. Uh, you could also upgrade to this once you have your hole started. You can get your grinder back out, something a little more powerful, and hold your tile up on the end and go from the backside and look through to the front, you'll actually see the blade pop through and be careful, look at that, pretty darn strong. So do a test cut before. There's me measuring that escutcheon, um, not a plate, but a cover just to make sure. And I definitely could have used that, but we'll do another cut here. 
again, if you're if you mess up and you're a sketch and plate, we'll cover it. No big deal, right? Don't stress about it. You just need to have enough clearance to get that shower arm through the hole in a way that doesn't encumber the shower arm. All right, here's another shot of me transferring the images or the measurements to the backside also. If you could certainly do that if you feel a little more comfortable, right? So you know exactly where to cut on both sides of the tile. And you can use your grinder here to actually do something similar that we did with the Dremel earlier. Although you'll find that you have by far less control and your corners are much tighter and it'll be much more difficult. I'm sure there's plenty of pros out there that can that can do it, but um, it was it was kind of tough. But here's that technique that I was talking about. Flip it on its side, put that grinder on the back, through the back, and just be real careful and just kind of slowly move it through until you can see the blade go where you want it to go and stop where you want it to stop. You don't want to push heavily at all. Again, it, the blade will take care of the cutting for you, I promise. Cuts like butter. It's really nice. And you can see I'm doing a series of more pizza cuts here. Much more controlled, right? And you can start chiseling those edges out with the ed with your grinder. And you could clean it up with your Dremel tool. So there's several options or several approaches you could you could take depending on what tools you have. But I definitely recommend doing a test cut on this small shower arm hole first. I mean, these tiles can be pretty expensive, the big ones, right? So if you mess up, you're kind of you're kind of SOL. Um, you're out of tile. Not the end of the world, but if I have the option of saving three or four bucks for a tile, I will choose to save three or four bucks every time, right? And that is pretty much it here. Let's see how it fits fits on. I do like to install the shower arm or the shower arm piece, the nipple there. Uh, to make sure that it does go through you don't if it's tight you don't want to get up, get your get your tiles you know up and then figure out that you needed to widen it out once you go to install install your shower head so um, definitely put your shower head in real quick just make sure there's enough clearance and then of course you can pop that baby out and put that aside but we'll go ahead and stop the video there that is how you make it's a couple of different holes in porcelain tile. Good luck with your project. Hopefully this video has been helpful. But if it has, don't forget to subscribe. I do lots of home projects around the house and also product reviews. And I try to put out videos every week or so. So thanks so much.